But y'all listen to this um recording real quick and we're gonna get into it. They complain, mama, let this music. And then they cut the music. Watch, they cut the music. Now I will turn it off. I will. But what's it not saying? I think that I was the one. It. I knew it. I knew but it. I don't know why I think that it is hurt because it's like, what if you, what if you playing the devil calling the lion? The lion? The lion. It could be so. I wish I felt bad. Hello, you all, and welcome back to my channel. I want to let y'all know first that I will start getting back to more topics, and I'm going to start back posting my relationship advice topics as well for the ones who've been asking. I haven't forgot about you all. It's just that this particular topic right here has been weighing in on me, and that's why I've been a little bit more invested into it. You know, like many have confessed, they have been through the same similar issues. Like we all have been some through some type of similar issues here. And so we can relate to it. But it's mainly how it's happening and how people are responding to it. It's surprising all the way around just seeing how we operate and how our mindset is. And, you know, on top of that, the allegations and, you know, that how they're being leaked. And everyone can agree that this has little to do with cursing. Now, let me go ahead and share my screen. You guys already heard the um, clip to where Carrion has suggested that his father may have molested him. And you heard the music that was playing, which is his father's music. Now, if we put two and two together, that's what it sounds like. Now, this is not coming from me. This is what's put out there. So we're trying to figure out, is this the reason why you know, he feels the way that he feels, but we're going to find out. But I find it interesting too, that um, back in 2013, as you guys can see, it says May 30th, 2013. It says that Kurt Franklin talks about a difficult childhood and porn addiction and relationship with his mother. Now I skipped all the way to 327 because that is the most important part of what we're going to hear, but I'm going to place a link down in the description so you guys can watch the whole video, but check this out. Sure and without flaw mm -hmm. uh, and without sin and you, you strive. I was always taught to strive for divinity, but mm -hmm. along the path, you know, you might go astray. I remember yeah, yeah. reading something and tell me if it's incorrect, but I remember reading something you said in an article about uh, you had an addiction to porn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yes, yes, I was raised. Uh, not only that, man, is that, you know, there was, there was some incest in our family. When mm -hmm. I was a kid, there was, there, there was some abusive stuff that, you know, that, that kind of happened in our family. I was a little boy, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, with, um, and like I said, my, my little sister, you know, you know, there was some, there was some, uh, you know, some rape and some things that happened in our yeah. family. And uh, there was some ugly images that we got introduced to as 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 kids. We're about the age of eight. Yeah. And so from about the age of eight to about the age of 29, mm -hmm. you know, I struggle with that, you know, just not only pornography, but also being very promiscuous, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, got into a lot of trouble, you know, at 15, you know, um, you know, paid for an abortion and mm -hmm. you, you know got into a lot of trouble as yeah. a kid man yeah. i got into a lot of trouble mm -hmm. and a lot of it was you know you know trying to find that missed love i think you know you know once i started you know you know trying to get right and i would go to counseling and everything you know when i when i was in my early 20s you know trying to find that love that i missed from them because i still know my mom yeah you know and i think it's worse when a kid is adopted and they still know their parents versus mm -hmm. when a kid is adopted and they don't know their biological mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so you guys heard that. Now, you know, we can't dismiss the fact that he has also been through a lot of issues, not having his parents around, being adopted, and having some sexual trauma and abuse in his life as well. So, you know, that doesn't excuse the fact of if, you know, it carried on down the line, but we can see how these things happen. And so that's why I said in my last clip that we don't know. And, you know, I can read people really good. And I'm not saying that I'm the best reader, but I can tell and I know that there were 
situations going on with each individual to cause this type of strife that's going on. But um, yeah, um, that could make sense of if that happened. Yeah. Did you guys notice that um, he said that it began for him with all the trouble that was going on in his life with the porn addiction, being promiscuous and all these things. Um, it started and it well, it, it was all the way up until the age of 29. And if you think about that, he had his son at 17. So that is uh maybe what that's like 12 years into it that your son experienced you at a point in your life where you were going through all of these troubles being addicted to the porn being promiscuous dealing with the rape and dealing with the abuse that was in your family fresh out of that and you're still young and you only having that to go off of trying to raise a son now now these are around the early stages and not just your life but his life as well and we and we learned that um children has the strongest learning measures between the ages of four and 12 years old. So any time between that time is when um, children pick up the things that they're gonna pick up. And those things are the things that are usually gonna carry on into their life, even into adulthood. Now, a lot of times, you know, the, the differences of what one person goes, goes through is different from another person. And that person can be able to get through it more fluently. But things such as rape or, you know, molestation and, and, and things like that or abuse, they take more time and more practice and more discipline to be able to try to handle the situation because in the back of your mind, it is trauma. And when, when you're talking about, um, when you speak about verbal abuse, um, there's a difference now. Now, a lot of people are looking at things as a matter as as far as like cursing, just curse words. If I say sit your A down or if I say shut the F up, you know, that's just cursing. Those are cuss words. But if I use like a terminology like sit your ugly black A down or, you know, you ain't going to be uh, ish in life or you know stuff like that that is attacking my character that's attacking my self-esteem that is attacking me verbally abusive type way because it's attacking attacking a person's character and if it's coming from a person that is near and dear to your heart or that is closest to you it hits harder than a person that's just saying that off the streets because these are the people that raised you now as far as um, him leaking this audio, I think he could have went about it a better way. You know, I understand that people need to get things out. And if you are already a public figure and you're in the public eye, people can have an opinion about you. You can build your own type of character and you can be loved from the public. That love that you get from the public, you know, that can transfer into healing for you because you're not getting it anywhere else now with the son he's not getting that same love from the fans he's not getting that same um love that his father is getting from you know millions of people so where is he going to get it from if he's not getting it from his family he's not getting it from fans so he feels like he needs to act out on it but i don't feel like he did it the mature way he did it in a more childish way like leaking an audio on your own family member. And a lot of people say, well, what is the difference? What is the difference? You know, all these celebrities are doing it and they're grown too. And I've said the same thing. Like a lot of celebrities are grown 30 some, 40 some years old on the internet, putting their, your, their family on reality shows, but then making them look bad and calling out all their personal business. But the difference is that, you know, First of all, they're celebrities. And these parents are financially dependent on their children. His parents are not financially dependent on him. Now, what he could have did was he could have, you know, sat down and had an interview with somebody. He could have sat down and talked to, you know, Ayana or, or another counselor or talked to somebody about it so he can let people know what he had to go through and what he's been feeling. The same way that his father is doing here on this show. 
he could have did it that way and people would have had more respect for him and people could have heard him out better than the way that he did it and a lot of people are saying he's a grown man he's a grown man okay he's a grown man and that's true but he still carries this on just like many of us grown people carry this on but i do understand why people say he's a grown man because the way he did it was not in a in an adult type way he didn't do it um he didn't do it like a grown man you see what i'm saying it's like me throwing a tantrum at the age of 40 or the age of 30 but i'm throwing a tantrum like a five-year-old it doesn't look right you see what i'm saying so that's why that's where the confusion comes in when a lot of people are not understanding where different perspectives are coming from. He didn't do it in an adult way. He did it in a childish way. That's the way he did it was kind of like how a teenager would do it. Like, ha ha, I got you on tape. You see what I'm saying? But he could have did the exact same thing and still got the got the love because of the way he did it. He could have been on on the real talk show and sat down and talked about his situations without just being, you know, without trying to take somebody else out in a process. That's that's really all that's going on. So I hope I kind of elaborated on that and made sense for the people that are kind of feuding and going at odds at it. And even with the cursing thing, it's not about the cursing per se. It's not about the curse words. It's about the the it's about what's behind the cuss words. It's about the actual roots of the problem. It's not even about him cursing. It's about the root of the problem. Why are you two? Why at this point in your lives are you two at this point? You know, and we all live normal lives, but it appears that you have more access to work on your life than other people do. You see what I'm saying? So it can appear that way. And that's why people are shocked. But like I said before, like he doesn't have anything to prove with us. Everybody's talking about council culture and, and counseling him. But I really haven't seen anything, anyone say that they were going to counsel him. Like I never, I did a little research and I didn't really see anything of anybody talking about counseling him. It seemed like majority of the world is rooting for him. And so I didn't understand why they had to do so many interviews to explain themselves. So that kind of made me wonder, like, why is there something that they're hiding? Is there something that's being hidden? Because it, it, people are saying that they're saying things without saying it. And then at, it seems like after the interviews, you hear the leaked audio from Carry On, but it wasn't even leaked by Carry On. You see what I'm saying? It's like he speaks on this. It's like all like a setup. I'm just to let this be known right now. I'm in no rush to tell the media lies. So I'm getting hundreds and hundreds of emails, phone calls, texts, comments, everything right now. I'm flooded. So I don't know who's on a timetable. But truth is truth. And what I'm about to see tomorrow, none of it's true. Uh, it's all good, though, because... I'm gonna tell my story and I'm gonna move on and get back to my creativity and my career. So you have a beautiful night and um, wow. I'm about to speak up, it's time, it's time. There you have it, now see, he posted this video the day before they did the interviews. Now, I don't know how he knew these interviews was going to go on, I'm assuming that when Tamron Hall contacted him, that's when he caught wind that they was going to be doing interviews because I've seen in a comment on Facebook where he responded to his mother saying, you didn't even call me, you haven't called me in a while, you could have you, you told me that you were doing an interview. So from what he says, he didn't, nobody told him, the mom or the father didn't tell him that they were doing interviews so i'm assuming that maybe he found out about the interviews that were going to be going on because he got contacted to do an interview it says what time am i supposed to watch more manipulation tomorrow toxic is when they can't leave you alone but still won't treat you right i am against parental abuse period i said I was done and I'm standing on it. He does not respect me and I don't feel safe around him. 
Still not one phone call. I am not going to call. This is supposed to be private matter, yet my parents are running to the public to play victim. You are about to see and learn the death of manipulation. What's funny about this is he's saying that they're going to the public, but he is the one who released all of this stuff first. So he is the one who started this whole fiasco and made it public, but he doesn't even realize that. See, that's part of the, um, that's part of not taking accountability when you can't even see what you're doing to cause this whole thing, because he don't even realize that he caught, even though things were happening, whatever's happening right now is what he caused. And he can't even see that. And see, that's what he needs help with trying to realize his own faults in this to us um kirk let me start with how did you learn the video had been posted well a lot of people in our family and community they they privately have known for 20 over 20 years of the tension and challenges that we've been going through as a family privately um, I have four children. Um, when I married my wife, I had a son and my, my wife had a daughter that I adopted. And so my oldest son and my, my bonus daughter, who's really my daughter, uh, we raised them together and I, and we have a great relationship with my oldest son's mother. Uh, her name is Sean Ewing. She's an incredible woman. And early on, Tammy, Sean and myself, we, we started to realize that there needed to be some deeper help with things that, that was happening with our son. And so around when he was a teenager, we started him in therapy and counseling and, and we, we've, we've had him in and out of counseling and therapy for over 20 years. And um, as Carry On became a grown man, when he became a grown man, his disrespect became more aggressive. And so once again, family members and, and, and friends and close friends, as a matter of fact, that was my close friend that was on the phone. Uh, I tried to get him on the phone to try to help with the situation. His name is John Drummond. So that's, that was him that, that was laughing in, in the middle of the conversation. It wasn't my wife. It wasn't Sean. It was my best friend who's like an uncle to carry on. He's no carry on since carry on was one. So, you know, just as a family, we've been trying to rally. Okay, so y'all heard that right there. Y'all heard that right there. So it's funny because like a lot of people were saying, you know, he a grown man, like why are they treating him like a child? So it kind of made people think like, is he having, does he have mental issues? Because a lot of times when you have a child that has mental um, health issues and they have, you know, things going on, it could be different things, bipolar, schizophrenia, a lot of things you have to kind of, you're worried about them. You don't want them to, you know, do anything or any harm to themselves or others. You really want to pay close attention to them and they kind of can't live, you know, on their own and without you not worrying about them. Some of them, you, they can live and take their medication, but some of them do fall in deep depressions and want to commit suicide. And a lot of medicines that these people take, they have worse uh, side effects to them than the problem that they have so if you haven't experienced anything like that then um you you wouldn't understand you know I have family members that have went through this stuff so it can be worrisome and it can you know put you in a state of like you don't know what to do you don't know how to help them and so you know that's understandable for them to want to keep trying you know if that's the case but then you have the leaked audio that came out. So now it's like, okay, they changed the game up now. They didn't change the game. Up. He said he about to speak up. And um, what is he going to speak up about? Because I find it kind of funny because Tamron Hall said that he re she reached out to him. She said that she reached out to him and he didn't respond. So he had a chance to respond. Now, I don't know. It seems like they got some stuff going on that they're trying to hide. And 
that molestation thing just came out right out the blue like out out of nowhere and it didn't come from him I don't know if he told his friend to leak it or whatever but it got leaked so it's kind of like they made so many speculations and left all these gaps open it's like they're talking but they're not saying anything and left all these gaps open but still not to make anybody look bad but it kind of just made people think that oh he oh he don't got no money he don't got no job he just want money he just a spoiled brat and he might got some mental problems because the way he acting is leaving people to think that about him and he's reading this he's seeing all of this and that's why that tape was leaked because he's like you know what i've been holding this secret in for so long i'm tired of holding this secret in is it that's it we need to leak this and it got leaked kurt can go to counseling and when they just come to agreement to want to go together they can go together too but at the same time they're both grown so it's like nobody has to hold your hand to go to counseling nobody has to hold your hand to make a person talk to somebody or you know it's kind of like that sense if i'm making sense of it so people are wondering why do he got to do all this stuff for his son like he's a baby or something when the son ready to talk and be respectful then y'all talk and if not then just don't talk until he's ready you don't have to go why do the back and forth us to sum it up why go back and forth with a with, with a grown-up like if i'm if, if my child is grown and now my child want to cuss me out and stuff I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deal with it just don't deal with it but it's feel like he seemed like he needed to deal with it he seemed like he needed to to deal with he got to be there every time and why does he have to have a third party all the time it's like the uh, the last audio that leaked it said that you know you were abusive in counseling last time so he was trying to claim that my dad is abusive and he put his hands on me but at the same time i want to figure out why is it got to be a third party and that's why it made people think that it was mental issues because if you got schizophrenia or something like that you could probably try to kill the man so we trying to figure out why you need three people all the time and why is everything being recorded it's like a trust issue the son don't even know where he stay at the son can't know where you stay at. But two years ago, he put a post. So two years ago, it says, gospel artist Kurt Franklin's son, Carry On, makes strong accusations about him. On, But yes, you read the title right. Gospel artist Kurt Franklin is being accused of trying to kill his own son. Now, uh, Franklin has two children with his wife, Tammy, and a son from a previous relationship named Carrion, and he was born in 1988. Now, uh, it is said that Carrion has been estranged from the family for years. Now, according to Black Christian News, now he popped up online and made a shocking allegation against his superstar father. Now, according to Carrion, he believes that his father, Kurt, is trying to kill him. Yes, 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 yes. Now, this is the uh, post, which has now been deleted. And it says, my own father is trying to kill me. Now, uh, his uh, Instagram name is Dragon Sacrifice. Now, he says, if anything happens, it's at Kurt Franklin's sneaky ass. A lot of funny shit has been happening, and he's in L.A. right now hiding from me, and I I haven't heard from him, so I'm just leaving this here for safety purposes. I can't deal with this shit on my own anymore. I'm done. My life is too valuable. In real time, hashtag offline, hashtag so what. Y'all heard that now, and y'all seen that. Now, you seen what his name was previously. I can't even find that. Hold on. It was Dragon Sacrifice. 
I can't even find that right now. So I think they must have taken his page down because he has a new one. And that first recording that he did, they blocked that one as well. So that has been since taken down. Yep, don't see it on here anymore. He has taken, they have, they have, I guess, got rid of that page or took it down. I don't know what happened to it, but it's no longer on Instagram. But he has a new page and that first recording that he put up has gotten blocked as well. Now check out what he put up here about that one. Now, what's funny is, he said his dad was trying to kill him. Now, that would make you think that it's some paranoid schizophrenia going on here because that's what paranoid schizophrenia people do. They are very suspicious and they think that people are trying to kill them or out to get them when they're doing nothing to them. They really do think this and I have a, pers a close personal, you know, a, a, I have a person that is close to me that is like this and that's how I know about this situation there's nothing they could be walking in the store and if a person gets too close to them or they assume that they're they're looking angry they can think that that person is plotting on them and it happens you know a lot of people may not understand it or they might not know about it but it happens but I'm not saying that that's what's wrong with him but this is a strong accusation. You see the key word up there, strong? It's strong because you're saying somebody's trying to kill you and not just somebody, your own father. But ever since this leaked audio came out about the molestation, that can be a very good reason why somebody would want to kill you if you were to get this out to the public. Y'all pay attention now. Y'all pay attention. See? There's some sneaky stuff going on right here. You see right here, he talks about sexual abuse and incest, right? He talks about this now. He talks about all this sexual stuff, all of this um, promiscuous acts and sex porn addiction. And one video, he said that he threw all the porn away and, and then he had to go drive back down the street to go get the porn out the trash can because he couldn't sleep at night. The porn was making him lose sleep. Now, for the people that just watch porn, we ain't talking about just no regular watching porn. It's just what men do. No. He couldn't sleep. The, the, the porn was making him lose sleep if he didn't watch it. He couldn't miss a day. He drove down all the way downtown to throw the porn away, and he had to get back in the car and go get it just to get a good night's sleep. Now, that's, that's beyond addiction. Now, you seen this right here. Then you heard you heard the recording. Let me play the recording because sometimes y'all get in the middle of the video and y'all forget what was said and start forming opinions. Let me play that recording again. They complain mama let this music. And then they cut the music. Watch. They cut the music. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Now I will turn it off. I will. But... Wasn't I saying? I think that was the one. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I think that it is hurt because it's like, what do you think the devil calling the lion? The lion. It could be so. I wish I felt bad. Then he got to sit down with Cameron Hall and explain himself. And then he had to get the baby mama to back him up. And it's just so much going. It's like he's scared. It's like he's scared. He's like, dang, we've been holding this secret for so long. Now you want to come out and do all this, you know? I've been I've been taking your phone calls. We've been going to cancel. And what do you want? What do you want? You heard what the mama said. What? Do, let me go back to that clip where she said, "What do you want? We got you canceling. We gave you money." You know, the counseling should have helped your problem. What do you want? Let's see. I'm tripping. Put 
push a T, push a T. I'm gonna go to the person page that actually did the interview. Sometimes they get, you get pushed back. And sometimes you get pushed back because they say things are not fair, or sometimes you get pushed back because they are in a rebellious state. And in order, as you're working through that, you're trying to really find out, well, what is it? And that's what we want to know. What is it? What is it, Carrie Young? Now, y'all notice right here where she said sexual assault and all that stuff and date rape and violence. Just listen. She's saying something without saying something. cancel somebody out or to expose someone and then if you are going to do that make sure you expose yourself first deal with yourself first so i have i worked at the women's center in tarrant county for uh six years and i worked in rape crisis and victim services and that's when i really became educated on sexual assault date rape domestic violence child sexual abuse and so uh as i've matured i tried to work with his father uh, to continue to parent our son. And most people will say, y'all shouldn't even be talking anymore. We talk when we need to talk about our son because that's how much we love him. Now, I'm not saying that's what she's saying, but it's kind of like, well, I work with this type of stuff that's kind of similar to the tape that was leaked again, you know, to the third leakage audio. So it's like, I work with this type of stuff. This stuff is relatable and similar to the third leaked audio. And then it's come centering back to your son and centering back to his father and, you know, how we're trying to help these issues, but the issues are not being talked about. They're not actually saying what the issue is. And that's what's kind of keeping people in a loop. It has everybody at a loop because they're trying to figure out what are the issues then? why what what's good just say it if i feel like if you're gonna make interviews if you're gonna leak audios if you're gonna leak audios if you're gonna have interviews if you're gonna do all this stuff you might as well say with the pro the 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 the, the worst part is already out you might as well say what the problem is now because now everybody gonna speculate and they're gonna make a problem for you just say it everything out anyway everything out anyway and for the people that keep saying mind your business mind your, it ain't they be it, it, it ain't your business mind your business it's you know what it's a million people business not because it's in the public it's in the public eye of a million people how can we not see it and how can we not talk about it? and it's funny because like even the guy the one that he said that um that wasn't uh, me laugh, uh, my wife laughing. That wasn't, you know, his mom laughing. That wasn't other people laughing on the phone. That was my dear friend. But it's funny because if you think about it, this is this is what makes me think: is this even real or not? Why was if you were in a serious heated moment and somebody was either about to fight or cussing somebody out and they saying stuff, why would somebody be laughing if the situation is serious at the time? Like, cause I've been around people that have been in the heat of the moment and shoot, they've been having my blood pumping from watching them. I'm not in no laughing mood. It don't look like comedy going on. So it's kind of funny. It's like, is it set up? Is it staged? Like, why would a person just be laughing while this going on? Like, I, I, I mean, he could be laughing because it was Kirk Franklin cussing. And it was kind of weird to him. That could be why he was laughing. But still, it wasn't a laughing matter. Okay, let me read that. It says, wow, speak your truth. I was on that call too, Carrie Young. And you're, and you're going to take a two-hour conversation and sum it up in a 45-second clip. Really? Here's some context on that audio clip. You were acting like you didn't understand what your father was saying about you being disrespectful to him and your mom. So he said, let me put it in a way you can understand. I even told you several times to stop trying to bait him. 
you're saying that's no way for a father to speak to his son, but that conversation was about how disrespectful how disrespectful you speak to your mom and pop. Remember, I had just got off the phone with you and your mom before the call with your pop. Oh, and you're going to sum this up as years of abuse? What years or abuse are you talking about? Speak your truth. On that same call with the therapist, you said you wanted to work on a relationship. So it looks like it was a bunch of people on the call, which that's like a violation of privacy. Like this friend, I don't know who this is, John Dramadoli, whatever his name is. And I'm, I am actually giving him clout right now by talking to him, um, talking about him on this video. But he's he even said they were on the phone with the therapist. But Kirk says he was on the phone with a friend. So what is the truth? It was it the son, Kirk, you and the therapist on the phone? Was it four people on the phone? And it's funny because even he said, hold on, he, even he said in the interview, you know, he, he's threatened a lot of things, but he didn't really go through with it. So if that's the case, if you say he, you know that he threatens things before in the past, did you uh, say you was going to kill him? you know, maybe jokingly, or you you kind of came at him and said he'll kill him, you'll kill him if he um put some stuff out there. And that's why he put that on the internet. It's all kind of making sense. Listen to this now, listen to this. Make sure real quick that, that our audience knows and realizes we did reach out to carry on over the course of the last few days and received no response from him. But Kirk, I do want to, because I know you, you you wanted to say something else to me. Are you still trying to reach him? I know you've been estranged. Hold on, because he said he didn't make It's very painful because I... I, having my son record our conversations was, was a big shock for me. I had no idea that he was, well, he's, he's threatened it, but because he's threatened so many other things, I was just confident that, you know, I'm going to keep fighting for him. And even in our conversations, if, if the fight gets tense, I just want to not give up on that one chance to maybe that one phone call may be the, you know, the words of, you know, I'm ready to get help. I'm ready to, to go back to therapy and get the the help that I know that I need. And so I just never wanted to give up on that opportunity, even though sometimes it, it, the conversation just goes left. So, I mean, I ask y'all to keep praying for our family. I would love to see God's hand uh, do a major intervention. Please pray for his mother. Um, she's releasing her own statements and videos. She's a great woman. Okay, so y'all heard that he said he's that the son's threatened a lot of things. So you just never know what those things were or why, you know, they're being threatened or it's just so much going on. And it seemed like this man has been in therapy basically mostly all his life since he's a been a kid and he's like I think 51 years old. He's been in therapy from you know, teenage, wait, actually, I think young adults age to now. So he's been in therapy for maybe about 30 years or so. And that lets you know that it doesn't matter what age you are. It takes time and it takes time for healing. And a lot, and this man has went through a lot of things. I would say more things than his son has been through. So, you know, it, that, that's why I say they need to heal separately. What I think, I mean, I think that Carry On should get some more counseling on his own so he can realize what it's going to take to grow up and be a man in life and to know the necessities and how to cope and how to get through situations without, uh, instead of going about it the way he's going about it. And that way he can be more mature to make personal decisions for himself and not be able to look to his father 
to be the voice of reason for his life now because he's responsible for his life now it's one thing to have childhood traumas and issues but when you do become an adult you're responsible for your own life now and so he has to get to the point to where i'm responsible for my life i'm responsible for the way that i come about doing things my communication um the actions that i take he has to go to counseling so he can learn how to do those things effectively. And they can't baby him and hold his hand to do that anymore. They have to let him be free to learn life um, because he's the one that's going to be in it. When they're dead and gone, he still has to be here. And he still is going to have to learn how to communicate, learn how to deal with issues, learn how to you know, uh, forgive, learn how to be more mature and make more mature decisions. And I think that that's what everybody is talking about when they say he's grown, because he doesn't need anybody to hold his hand to do the healing. That doesn't mean you don't have to talk to your parents anymore. Like a lot of people, a lot of people have been spewing out a lot of negative. If you look on now, if you look on Lipstick Alley, you'll see a lot of speculation. This was actually back in January 4th, 2018. And a lot of people were assuming that the son was gay. Now, this is just all speculation. This is not coming from me. This is stuff I'm reading on the net. This one right here says, isn't he gay? If I'm not mistaken, we had a thread on them before. And the same question was asked. We deduced it. We, we deduced it was because he was gay and he probably disowned him. I could be totally wrong, but I believe that's what happened. And this is, you know, referring to Kurt Franklin's abandoned son. Now, we remember that back then, around that time, it said around 2018 or so, he put that statement out about him, um, his dad wanting to kill him. And then if you also see right here, um, it says right here that Carry on Franklin is not himself gay, but has a deep respect for the community of LGBTQ, unlike his father, Kurt Franklin. It says, uh, Carry on Rashad Franklin is the oldest child of the gospel singer and has been working as a music producer for Swank Media as an independent singer for quite some time. And um, he does not seem to follow his father's footsteps of living as living his life as a gospel singer so there are two different people he's not following his his father's footsteps when it comes to the music industry i guess in the gospel aspect of it but um it seems that he is like he respects the lgbt community and that's why the speculation was there but then we also look into the counseling part of things all right, so we see, if I'm looking at this article right here, and it says that many men find it difficult to admit they were sexually abused. Our culture encouraged males to believe they should be in charge of every aspect of their life. So when boys are abused, they often think they should have been able to stop the abuser. Later, as adults, they may blame themselves for having allowed them. And um, this can carry on into adulthood and you can have some type of um, trauma, trauma about it. It says that uh, confusion about sexual orientation, um, it plays a big impact by sexual abuse. And the confusion about sexual orient orientation comes into play. And you may be confused about or question your sexual orientation. And, we're, and that can be very well what the case may be or what's going on. And um, down here, it talks about this fear and these actions are called homophobia. However, homophobia is a persuasive, is a um, pervasion in our society and is not an indicator of sexual abuse. Now, we have seen that Kurt Franklin has made a lot of videos on homophobia um, very recently and over the past few years. You guys can look that up as well. If I put that in here, this is going to make this video even longer. But I'm just trying to show you the different things and different patterns that's going on and how all of this can trickle. But my three questions, why now?
you know, why speak up now? Why hasn't it been before? You know, is this a, um, is this a publicity stunt? Or, you know, is this stuff really true? Like, we don't know. Nobody's saying anything. And, you know, the the, the, the son even talked about a mixtape. He said something about a mixtape and he said, hashtag Medusa something. Mixtape coming out. So who knows what is what is going on here? But who knows? Nobody nobody knows what really happened. But a lot of stuff has transpired over the past three days. That's what I've known, and it's it's been transpiring quicker than I imagined it to. So y'all, let me know. Do y'all think that it's a publicity stunt, and everybody's trying to get clout? Do y'all think that he actually been molested or had some childhood traumas or mental issues or whatever? That some stuff must be going on because a lot of them actually admitted that something was going on, but they just not saying what. So we can all agree to that. Something has been going on to where they have to still do counseling now. But for the reason that they have to still do counseling now, it's kind of tricky because it's like, what are you trying to hide? Why do you feel like you need to do all this stuff? Has there been a threat? Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments because I, I, I still don't have an answer. We done went down this, this journey and I still don't have an answer. All right, y'all. It's been real. Y'all like, comment, and subscribe and hit the bell button for the next video. And um and I'm going to do a poll. Y'all let me know what y'all want me to talk about next.